everyone. Today I am going to talk about how to use Google Scholar. Specifically, I'm going to focus on what it is as a tool, what makes it different from, say, other Google or library searches, and most importantly, how to use the text of a journal article. So let's go right ahead and get started. You may be thinking, okay, wait a minute, hold on. What's Google Scholar? Google Scholar is a focused search engine. So Google Scholar has, maybe you might be familiar with Google Images. They also have Google News, Google Books, and Google Scholar is a resource that gives us access to primarily academic scholarly peer-reviewed journal articles. So when you hear a college instructor say, you need a scholarly article, they're probably talking about something that you're going to retrieve from Google Scholar. Now, yes, you can get them from the library. Yes, I'm going to talk about that. But as with most things in life, Google's algorithm is second to none. And so it can make using Google Scholar just very, very simple and easy. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go to scholar.google.com. And we're going to enter in a specific search term. Now, I'm going to go with the cons of social media. And the reason I'm going to do that is because social media is probably the most hot topic that I get essays on. So let's say that I'm going to search that. What I'm going to get when I search Google Scholar is I'm going to get, again, scholarly journal articles. And what that means, it's there's kind of a long story, but basically the, the work that we see in journal articles are things that have been researched at an academic level. Usually there's been some scientific rigor and mathematical kind of equating when it comes to the publication of these articles. And this is where the scientists kind of get their science from. So you may be familiar with the idea that like books are where it's at, right? If it's in a book, it must be something that's really important, something that's really established. And that is true, but knowledge and information is constantly changing. And we find it constantly changing here in academic scholarly research. So you'll see here that these are journals. This is Employment and Society. This is the Lancet on um, Respiratory Medicine. And, and the Lancet is one of the most well-known uh, medical journals there is. There's Pediatric Critical Care, the importance of media literacy, a lot of different topics here. There's a different journal for everything. Higher Education, Teen Screens and Social Connection, all of these different articles address the impact of social media on uh, people, right? The, the cons of social media. Now, if I really want to be thoughtful about using Google Scholar and using it in a way to get the latest and greatest, like I was saying, what I'm probably going to want to do here is refine my search. So you see this here anytime from 2020, 2023, 2024, set a custom range. I'm usually going to go back about three or five years. So I'm going to click on since 2020, and that is going to give me more recent results. Now, the reason I'm going to do that is, is a couple fold. <clears throat> Obviously, I want the, the latest and greatest, most up to date. And so I don't want anything from 2008. The world of social media has changed greatly since then. I'm going to go with 2020 because it is within five years. Usually I'm going to stick to about three to five years as my maximum. So here, right, I've got a, an article on social media during COVID-19, something that incorporates the fact that the world changed forever four years ago, right? And with it, social media, that's kind of a big deal. That's kind of why I wanted to make sure to update my, my, my search date uncovering coordinated networks on social media, something that was published in 2021. And I can go through and find all of these articles more from the pandemic and, and, and kind of down the line. 
So let's say that I find an article that I like, right? Let's say that I really like this one. I'm attracted to the all caps, withdrawn, a systematic study of sentiment analysis for social media data. Let me, oh, that's withdrawn. That's why it's all caps. That's why it's grabbing my attention. Let me try something else. Uh, this one, social media is a personal branding tool, a qualitative study of student athletes' perceptions and behaviors. I love this one because I also will have students who are writing about whether or not college athletes should be paid and should be able to do a lot of personal branding, all kinds of good stuff. So I'm going to click on this article. And I'm going to see it here and I'm going to hit download and I'm going to see what happens. Okay. I got a full PDF and I'm going to talk about this. I'm going to annotate this. I'm going to break this down for all of you, but I wanted to point out too, and, and I did click on the main link. Sometimes if you click on these main links, you'll hit a pay gate and I'll see if I can find a pay gate. This is taking my, me right to PDFs. But sometimes I hit a pay gate and it says, oh, if you want this, you have to purchase this. But if I click on it in the margin, it frequently opens the document and gives it to me in a PDF and it's opening up here. So just as a, a main feature of Google Scholar, and you can start to see some of these articles are different lengths. And I'm going to stop and I'm going to break one down and I'm going to explain how to review a scholarly journal article in a moment. You want to click on these PDF links in the margins to open the documents. That's the closest way to not hit a pay gate. If you do hit a pay gate and it says you have to pay to give this article, step one, you're going to search the college library for it. We probably already pay for it. Step two, you're going to search the name of the article with the letters PDF and see if it's somewhere else out there on the internet. And if neither of those things works and you still cannot get around the pay gate, you cannot get the article for free, you are going to email me the title of the article and I will access one of many college libraries until I find it and I will send it to you. So no, you do not need to pay for these articles. Yes, you do need to let me know if you need me to grab one. Couple extra features to note that each article has an ability to save it, to put it on your bookshelf in your library. You can also cite it. Now, this is my favorite here. And for those of you doing annotated bibliographies for my classes, use this. Here's the MLA citation. Here's the APA citation. Here's the Chicago citation. These are actually almost spot on. Do you know what's been capitalized or italicized? The only thing that's missing from these citations is the DOI number, the digital object identifier, which you would find in most of the articles. So I'm going to break this one down. And I'm looking for a DOI number. I don't see one here, but usually they start with one zero dot something, something, something. I'll find one real quick. Most of them have them. Oh, this is only a three page article. Let's see. Here's a DOI right here https colon slash slash doi.org 10.0001. I would include this entire string here in the citation. So it gives you the citation, except for the DOI number, you're just gonna slap that in at the end. And that is an incredible feature. You can also use the cited by feature. If you're like, oh, this journal article was everything, everything I needed to know and more. You can click cited by, and you can get all of the other articles that have cited that source. And it can help you find more information if you're like scraping the bottom of the research barrel. Like let's say your mean composition teacher makes you do an annotated bibliography with 25 entries and you're looking for more and you just don't know what to do. Click on that cited by button and hopefully it will lead you to some more great resources. So I have a journal article open now. I went through and 
used Google Scholar, found a scholarly source, came out in March 2020. It's recent. I have authors. They are reputable. And I'm really interested in this link between social media and student athletes. So this is definitely the journal article for me. What I can do next is I can annotate this as I read. Now, if it's me, I'm old school, folks. I'm going to go find somewhere on campus that lets me print for free. I am going to print a copy of this. I'm going to staple it, put it in a binder, break out my highlighter, and I'm going to annotate it. But I want to talk, focus on what to look for in this article and how to kind of annotate it thoughtfully. So I'm going to annotate it in its PDF form and I've opened it up here in Adobe and this will let me kind of take notes as I read. I'm going to take a look at the front matter. The first thing that I'm going to do as I prepare to kind of read this and to take notes, is I'm going to give it a quick top to bottom, bottom to top, which is to say I'm going to scan and I'm going to scroll to the bottom and then I'm going to scroll back up to the top very quickly just because I want to get an idea for how much I have in front of me. Now I know I have 21 pages. I'm here on page three. So I'm already thinking to myself, okay. This is going to be in the 17, 18 page range. It's going to take me a little while to kind of read through it to do that protected read. I have an abstract. I have an intro. I have a literature review. I have all of these headers, which I might want to set up as the skeleton outline for my read. So I might in my notebook make a note of research gap and purpose study, method, research design. I might make a label for each of these things so that as I read, I can start taking notes under each sample. I'm starting to see a sample. I'm starting to see what looks like data, interview questionnaire, data analysis, data collection procedure, results, benefits of social media for branding, barriers, strategies. I keep reading and something that I'm noticing about this article is it looks really easy to read. And I say that knowing that many of you are like, whoa, hold on a second. That's like 18 pages. That is not easy to read. But let me tell you folks, a lot of journal articles, a lot of jargon, a lot of equations, math symbols that don't make any sense, data charts of just like ones and zeros that don't seem to have any meaning of anything. This one, as far as journal articles go, looks pretty basic. And I see a lot of facts. I see a lot of research. I see a lot of, I like this, concerns, lessons learned practical implications of conclusion. I see a lot of stuff. I also see a lot of resources here. If this is something that I'm trying to be an expert on, I'm going to look at these references and say, hey, have I read all of these? Are these familiar? Do any of these look good to me? But I'm going to notice, of course, too, that the last few pages of the journal article are sources. Now, as I said, my first read, I'm going to do a top to bottom and bottom to top. I'm going to get an idea of what I am in for in my reading. And in general, I'm seeing, okay, this looks pretty good. I've got my references. I've got a lot of great content. I've got some original research. And now I'm ready to do a more in-depth read. So to do that more in-depth read, I'm going to annotate as I go, as long as it doesn't slow me down. I want to make sure that I am highlighting and adding notes, but I also want to make sure that that the process of doing that is not going to slow me in, in actually reading. Now, again, I'm old school. So the way that I'm going to do it is I'm going to print this out at home and I'm going to use my, my good old trusty pink and yellow highlighters and my gel pen and review this independently. But I'm going to do it with the digital tools because I know that many of you might do the same. And this would be something that maybe you're going to do 
in the process of creating an annotated bibliography entry is, is actually just annotating the reading. And I've said it before, but I don't know that I've said it in this video. You hear in the word annotation, a note. That's what we're doing is we are focusing on note strategies. So I'm going to break down the main parts of this journal article and really talk about how to read this journal article well. So if you're looking and you're like, okay, but there was still like 15 pages of text here, even with all the front and the back matter and the references, there's a lot going on here. You might be thinking, this is just too much. I, I can't, I can't read this. The good news, folks, is you don't have to read this. In fact, the only thing you really need to be able to do is to read this little baby right here, the abstract. Now, the abstract is a 200 to 250 word summary of the study of the research from start to finish in plain English. So this little paragraph is everything that's going to come after it from start to finish. It's the beginning, it's the middle, and it's the end. This is going to tell us every single thing that is in this article. And that's a pretty cool thing to, to have that ability to be able to just read a summary of the whole thing. If you can just read the abstract, folks, you can read a journal article. You don't need to be able to read the whole thing. You really just need to be able to read this. So let's take a look. While previous research focused on social media and student athletes, there's a lack of knowledge about positive functions of social media use for student athletes, especially personal branding purposes. Okay, so I could underline this. I could highlight this. I certainly need to just, just digest this and talk about what this kind of means. Basically, the authors are saying, hey, we read all the other research that was out there. We read it all. We went to Google Scholar. We went to the library. We read books. Everything that was out there on social media and student athletes, we read it. Check the references at the end. It's there, right? They're acknowledging the work that came before them. They're acknowledging the research that existed before them. That's a really big deal in science and in scholarship that we're building on what was previously done. So the scientists here, Jin Park, Antonio Williams, and Sungwook Son are saying we read everything and there's a lack of knowledge about the positive functions of social media use for student athletes, especially personal branding purposes, right? Um, there's just not enough out there, at least that's academic. Thus, this study aims to explore how, and I guess I could add a little note too if I wanted to, I could say, the authors read things available and found a gap in knowledge. And that's how we do things. We we find gaps in knowledge and we design research studies to try to fill those gaps. So I'm going to add that little comment in there. Thus, this study aimed to explore how athlete, student athletes perceive it and use social media for personal branding purposes. A total of 11 student athletes at a Division I university participated in semi-structured interviews. So here I could make a little note they are telling me about the research design. They're telling me how they've designed this particular study. That's going to be a big deal. Considering the exploratory nature of the study, a qualitative inquiry and a phenomenology approach were employed to grasp an overall understanding of student athletes' as personal branding via social media. So what they did was they did semi-structured interviews. And with that, they asked the, the participants, the 11 student athletes, some questions, but they weren't always all the same questions. Sometimes the answers would lead them to new questions that weren't necessarily on the original list. That's a semi-structured. Then they also had a qualitative inquiry. So they focus on stories and words and responses 
That's as opposed to a quantitative inquiry, which would be very hard math. It would be very number-based, be very statistics-based. And they also use a phenomenology approach. And phenomenology is the study of a phenomenon. So basically, the researchers who did this study were like, okay, we're going to find 11 student athletes who are like Olivia Dunn. Like they're killing it. They're student athletes. They're building a brand. And we're going to ask them a bunch of questions and we're going to study them and observe them and see, watch them out in the wild and see what they're all about. And, and that's what that section says right there is that's their research method. It's not quantitative. It's not numbers. It's not statistically based. It's we found 11 student athletes and we watched them really carefully and they they talked to us. That's what the, the that is. The self-presentation theory was adopted to help understand student athletes' use of social media. This is a big one, right? Because if the, the interview was of the student athletes, then they're self-presenting themselves, and then that could lead to certain bias and some other things, like also how they present themselves on the internet. There's, there's a number of factors to consider with this particular research approach. Emerging themes included benefits and barriers of social media. Let's see, highlight this. Emerging themes included benefits and barriers of social media use, social media, media strategies, and concerns about negative consequences of social media. Findings, right? I've got the word findings here. That's a big deal. That's gonna tell me that we're about to hit a conclusion. Findings from this study shed light on the importance of increasing awareness a knowledge of the concept of personal branding via social media for student athletes. These findings also call for more effective social media training or education programs that can foster student athletes as positive attitudes towards social media for use for personal branding. Okay. So if you're like, okay, what does that say? These are the findings. What does that say? And you're going to see this a lot when you're reading journal articles, folks. What this says is they need to do more research and bring about more awareness and more knowledge and do more training. It says almost absolutely nothing here, right? All of this, this 21 page document is these researchers said, okay, we need to do this study. They talked to a few people and they said, hey, we need to study this some more. That's it, folks. And I say that's it, like it's so simple. That's what most of these journal articles are. They're saying like, okay, hey, we studied this thing and we learned very, very little. Here's what we learned. And here's seven more things that we need to know now. And then the next researchers pick up the football and say, okay, there's still a lack of knowledge about this, that, or the other. Now we're going to build off of the research that Park Williams and Son did. So if you can understand an abstract, you understand the entire journal article. And if you can understand that most of these are, hey, we found a gap in the knowledge and here's how we try to understand it. And we understood it a little. So here's what we found. But what we really found is that we need more understanding. If you get that, if that makes sense, right? That's what academic scholarship, that's what journal articles are often all about. Very rarely does someone find the cure for cancer all in one go. It's it's a little bit on a little bit and a little bit. And as you'll notice here, they have all of these citations. And at this level, you might have two different citations for a single sentence or three different citations for a sentence. The authors are using these citations to say, I read this study, I read this study, I read this study, this is what I found. So here's what else we're going to look at. Here's what else we're going to learn from a journal article. And I'm going to try not to go too far in depth because the really important thing that I want you to remember is if you understand the abstract, you understand everything else. But after that, we're going to have the introduction. And the introduction is going to establish a really hearty defense of why we need to study this topic and why it's a big deal, the impact that this topic has. So if you're looking for something similar in your own research, 
right? What is the impact of this phenomenon? Then an intro to a journal article is, is going to be very, very helpful. You're also going to run into, very often you're going to find a literature review. And a literature review, like I was saying, is or at the beginning with the abstract, they read every bit of literature that existed on personal branding and social media. They read every single article. And this literature review here, this is a quick summary of all of that. And you see a lot of citations in this because that's what they're doing. They're saying this is what all of these studies, this is what all of these sources have found to be true. This is a review of the literature on personal branding, personal branding and social media, athlete branding and social media, all the way down the line. They're also providing theory here. They're showing the research gap and the purpose of the study. And it's got the research questions. This is very common in academic work. You're gonna have key research questions that are guiding the hypothesis. Then something that really sets scholarly research apart from everything else is going to be the research method and the design. Now, in this one is qualitative and phenomenology they're using. Pretty easy, pretty simple. It's just kind of interviews and talking to people. But for most journal articles, your method and your research design are going to involve the rigorous collection of data the analysis of that data using statistics and a whole other slew of, of quantitative scientific statistical tools to try to get to the root of what is being observed, what is being studied. So this study used qualitative semi-structured interviews. They used phenomenology and that's discussed in the method and research design. And again, this is the same stuff we read about back in the abstract, but in much more detail. It also gives us a little bit of a background on the data that was analyzed, right? These are the 11 people that could be used in order to uh, analyze this data. They tell us what the questionnaire was. They give us the collection procedures, how they analyze the data. It's a lot harder to analyze qualitative data than quantitative data. They give us the results all the way through, broken down, including some excerpts from some of the research participants. They give us strategies. They give us lessons learned. They give us discussion, things that we've learned, things that we need to learn next. And ultimately, they give us a conclusion at the very end. So in a journal article, we're often going to see a great introduction, a review of the literature, a section on methodology, a section with results, a section with lessons learned or things to be studied in the future. You might see something that's practical implications. There are all these main features that are a part of pretty much all scientific inquiry, pretty much all academic research, that the more you read these journal articles, the easier it's going to be to, to break them down and to get them and to understand the different components. But you are going to run into journal articles where just nothing makes sense. Like it's just a bunch of mathematical gobbledygook, a bunch of big fancy words that mean absolutely nothing. If you can get the abstract, you can get everything that you need. And by the way, if the abstract isn't making sense, folks, copy it, plug it into ChatGPT and say, could you explain this at a seventh grade reading level? Or could you explain this coming from uh, someone who is really interested in sports, right? Use sports metaphors. You can have it break it down for you and make it easier to understand. So do use journal articles, folks, especially for your papers, but I would love to see them in your annotated bibliographies. Do make sure to use that site button on Google Scholar. If you hit a pay gate, send me that article, let me know. And just start by reading the abstract and see what of the rest you can read. If you can read it, awesome. Read it, 
If not, don't even worry about it. Just skip on over it and keep on moving. I hope that this information helps. Let me know if you have any questions or better yet, send me some journal articles you need help finding.